trying to, I'm going to get you to tell a little bit about yourself for sure. But um, y'all, she's just a fun, just a, we love being around her. And if y'all ever look at her social media, her, her pictures are always perfect. It's crazy. Always, always perfect. So unmute yourself, Samantha. Okay, here I am. Okay, awesome. Hi guys, I am so excited about this. I'm actually kind of nervous because I know that it's like a 30 minute thing here and I talk really fast. So luckily Susan let me know that we'll open up chat here later at the end because I start talking fast and then I'm like, oh my gosh, I still have 10 minutes. <laughs> so don't worry, I have plenty of stuff to chat with you guys about today. Um, I'm really excited because I have my own personal story of starting over and I will get to that, but we all have started over because this pandemic has made us have to start over. So we all are in this together. Everyone has experienced either you've been here for a long time and you realized we have to run our business a little bit different now um, and start over, um, or you're brand new because you're starting this new because of the pandemic and having to maybe create some more income or whatnot. So hopefully everybody here can relate to starting over. And that's kind of my little topic here. So I want to give you a little background. I had to write down exactly what my um, history is because I've been here for almost five years. This month will be five years. So um, I was one of those leaders that when I started, I hit the ground running. So um, I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, I lived in Ohio at the time. So I was a mom of a two and a four year old and I was a hairstylist. I was working behind the chair and I was tired. Um, mostly because I love my job so much that you know, I was lucky and proud to have a career where I get to help people feel good every day. But I was tired. So I was giving my clients and my coworkers the very best version of me, but my family never got to see that. My family never got to see me, um, you know, being positive and happy because when I woke up, I hit snooze over and over and over. Then we're rushing around, we're hurry, get your things, put your shoes on in the car, we gotta go, um, rushing. And then um, when I would get to work, I would just, turn it on and drink coffee all day to get through the day. And then when I get home, mommy's tired, mommy doesn't feel good, go play together, go outside, go to your room, maybe later, not now, like never was active. And so I was mom guilt 100. Like mom guilt was like the name of my game. So um, when I started thriving, that's what I was looking for. Um, and I had this energy about me where I was looking for something new. I had just read the book, The Secret. Okay. If you haven't read it, read it, watch it. It's on Netflix. Um, but it's all about the law of attraction and how you attract what you're putting out there. So, so I was looking for the Thrive experience, but I didn't know it was going to come packaged in this pretty little sticker. <laughs> I didn't know what I was looking for. I just knew I was tired. So you guys, please remember that these people that you find to start your, their Thrive experience with you, they're looking for the same thing. They're ready to change their life too. So that's where I was at in my business. I was struggling <laughs> and just looking for a way to feel better. So when my husband came home and said his friend, Tom, his wife is selling some product, I don't know, something about energy. I was just like, um, <laughs> sign me up. I don't know what it is. I don't know who she is. I know you're, I know Tom's your friend, but I've never met Tammy Battaglia, who's fantastic, by the way. Um, <laughs> I had never met her and I didn't care because he said energy and my mindset was I need to change. So I was actively looking for something more. Um, I didn't even know that Thrive was a sticker that you wear. <laughs> I had no idea. Um, when it showed up, I just, she just was like, here's how you take it. Um, let me know how you feel. And that was it. I had no expectations. So um, it works. If you know that and you're here and you're a promoter, you know it works, right? So 
Um, I just started telling people about it. They were noticing it in me. Before you knew it, I was going to be thriving for free. And Tammy's like, hey, you might as well be a promoter. So I'm like, I don't know what that is. I can't even sell shampoo to my clients, guys. I can't even sell hairspray. I am not a salesperson. I can't do it. I'm happy to share what it's done for me, but it's just the business is not for me. So... <laughs> Um, she was like, it's really easy. You're already thriving for free. You might as well get paid. So I actually asked her, do you care if I come to your house? Can I come to your house? And can you please show me what it means to be a promoter? Here I am expecting to have to buy this big giant kit and pay for a website and pay. Like I was expecting her to give me the 411 on what it actually means to be a promoter. And she did it. She showed me her cloud office. She's like, this is all I got. I don't really know what to tell you, um, except this is what we do here. And so I jumped all in. It was amazing. So I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Um, October 2015, I became a brand promoter. Um, November 2015, I was 4K. December 2015, I was 12K. Auto bonus, first year, 2015. Um, January 2016, I was also 12K, and by February of 2016, I was 40K. I hit 40K for three months in a row, and I lost my rank. I went back to 12K. So May of 2016, I'm back at 12K, and I was stuck there for four years. And I don't want to say stuck there, because 12K is a big deal. They still paid for my car every month right so in my mind I was just kind of like well I'm still being successful I was still doing all the things I'm still doing five four three two one I'm still reaching out to new people but I felt like where is my team like I feel like I'm doing all the work why is it my team doing anything I'm kind of blaming it on them like I get I have a PPA of 10 and my next person has a PPA of two and this is constant every month where's my team where's my team where's my team and it was an excuse um, however, the Thrive Experience making me feel better and the Thrive Experience being a promoter allowed me to quit my job as a hairstylist where I was working and open up my own hair salon. Best dream ever, right? My dream came true. I got my dream salon. I made it my own. I had a pretty chandelier with all the things, the products, everything. But the reason I wanted that hair salon was not to have a business it was because I like the sense of community and I wanted to control that environment I wanted my clients to come and feel welcome so I was that that was my dream that was my goal and that's what I got so I got complacent because I got my salon and I got my auto bonus and I felt like I was doing all the things so I just was like I'm gonna be stuck here at 12k forever fine right um but then I got that feeling again that I had when I was looking for the Thrive Experience. I had that um, fire, like there has to be something more. So, you know, I really want you to think about what happens when you get what you want. What are you gonna do then? Because goals are great, but it's not about the goal. It's about who you become when you reach your goal. So I reached my goal, I got my salon but I wasn't fulfilled. I didn't feel any different. And then I was bored. <laughs> I was bored doing the same thing over and over and over and over. So I was putting it out into the universe again. I was, um, you know, there has to be something more. There has to be something more. Um, my family had always had a dream of moving away. We lived in this little tiny town. Um, in Jamestown, our population was 1,200. I felt like everybody was already thriving. I'm seeing the same customers over and over, which is great, but I was bored, <laughs> essentially. So um, we talked about moving, we talked about moving, we talked about moving, and then we had some family drama happen. So if you've been there, you've been there. Um, and we just felt like it would be best to finally quit talking about it and just go. And when my husband said, pack your things right now, we're moving to Arizona. I was like, okay, let's go. Come on, let's get in the car. And he thought I was going to say no. Um, I think he kind of thought I was going to say no, like we really shouldn't. We should just stay. But we just went. You guys, we <laughs> had a successful business. We had all the things, 
but we weren't happy. So we decided to start over. We packed my car and our two kids and we moved across the country. We drove three days from Ohio to Arizona and we just started over. It was the most exhilarating thing to do, but it was also terrifying. And I mean terrifying <laughs> to literally leave everything we've ever known and just start over. So because of doing this, um, I don't know if you guys know what it's like to be a salon owner in a small town, but you know everyone and they know you, but not on a deep level, it's all surface level. So when we left, I deleted a lot of Facebook friends. I went from 5,000 to 500. I had this mindset of, I'm changing my life and I'm going to be more intentional of who is in my life and I'm going to start over. So as a 12K trying to grow, you know you need to have a network to talk to. So going from 5,000 friends to 500, that, that was, that was um, a shell shock for me. So then what do you do? Like, how do you rebuild? How do you grow those Facebook friends? And how do you meet new friends when you move to a different state? It was hard. I am not going to sit here and tell you that it was easy because it was the hardest, single most hardest thing I have ever had to do. So, um, you know, we were 12K, 12K, 12K. We moved here in August of 2019. So we've been here a little over a year, not here. We're in Vegas right now. If you didn't hear Susan earlier, but we are in um, Arizona. We've been there for a year. And um, in April of 2020, we earned our 40K back. So that was huge for me because four years we were stuck at 12K. And all of a sudden, we're at 40K. Um, so it was possible to grow. And I'll tell you, you know, how I did it. But just know that it's okay to be scared. And actually, it's more exciting to be scared. Because when you're comfortable, you are not growing, period. If you're just going through the motions, if you're doing 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and that's it, if you're seeing the same people every day, if you're talking to the same people every day, it can feel busy, but it is not productive. You're not actually getting anything done, and that's exhausting in itself. So when you decide to start over, when you decide to start new, when you decide to pack up your family and move across the country, when you decide that the pandemic is changing your life and you want to stay home with your kids, when you decide that... Um, you know, it's time to change. It is so scary, but it is so much more fun to be scared than it is to be bored. Um, when I moved out to Arizona, I want to be honest with you guys. I had never been involved in a church that I liked. I went to church growing up as a child. I always felt like it was a burden. It was like a thing you had to do to make your mom happy. It was like, oh, do we have to go? And then we were always late. And then we were just like, it was never fun for me. So it was never interesting to me. Um, but when my husband's mom was alive, she would take our kids to church every Sunday. And she passed in February of 2018. And so when we moved to Arizona, our daughter was like, mom, I want to go to church. Let's find a church. And I found a girl who is a thriver. Her name is Amy Livonius. I love her. She um, had been posting about her church and I reached out to her. She took me to her church and that became where I started to make friends. That became where I started to make relationships. That became a place where I finally felt like this is new. This is where I'm ready to start a new beginning. Um, and that is where I learned how to pray, which is like, huge, huge, huge for me. <laughs> and I remember boldly praying one day, asking God, am I supposed to be in this business? Like, this is when we're still stuck at 12K. We moved. I don't have any friends yet. Is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Or do I need to go find a job? Like, is this right? Or is this wrong? And I am in that same mindset. Um, and when I opened my eyes and decided, okay, he's going to send me a sign. I'm going to know if this is it or not. Um, 
Jason Camper sends out an email saying, guess what, this week your commissions are doubled. And it was like, uh, just because. No reason, nobody knew he was gonna do it, he just did it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I just boldly prayed for a sign, like is this it, is this the sign? And he tells me my commission's gonna be doubled when we just moved across the country, that was huge for us. And then I open my Facebook and there is Susan, going live, saying, I boldly prayed for my paycheck and your paychecks this morning, and we got it. And I am in tears in my living room, like, I boldly prayed, Susan boldly prayed, Jason came through, this is a sign from God, this is it, I'm all in, I have no more questions, like, let's go. And that's when we grew. Like, I asked for it out loud, and that was what changed for me. Um, so in February, um, I joined this prayer and fasting thing with the church. I went every morning at 6 a.m. and prayed with them. We fasted together, and it was like day 15. I won't read you the entry. I did read it to my team the other day. Um, but it was also about boldly praying. And I wrote in my journal that the thing I missed about being a hairstylist was cultivating relationships. I missed that one-on-one -on -one getting to talk to somebody hearing about their life, making them feel better. And I, I was praying for my Thrive team. I was praying for that relationship with them. That was my missing link. I had hundreds of promoters that I didn't really know, that I wasn't really talking with, that I wasn't really making relationships with. That's what was lacking in my team. And that's how I grew my team. That's how my team skyrocketed. I changed my team from just copy pasting and posting everything that every other leader was already posting, you know, calls, um, Zooms, trainings, emails. That's all my team was. That's all that was going in my, in my, you know, team page. And then I decided that, you know, that day when I prayed, I said, what I'm missing is that one-on-one -on -one relationship. And that's what I started to grow with my team. And they took off like wildfire. You guys have no idea how much it means to somebody when you reach out to them one-on-one, -on -one, not in a group chat, not a question or a poll in your page, but when you're actually making connections with your level ones, but also your level twos and your threes and your fours and people who maybe they're upline left and they don't even think that you know that they're still there. When you make the time to connect with those leaders one-on-one, -on -one, that makes a huge difference. You have got to, I know Mario talks about a lot about edifying your leaders, like do that, be a human, be a person. Like I said, when I first started, I was looking for something so desperately. So is every single soul that's in your back office when they started the Thrive Experience. They were in that same place as you were when you found the Thrive Experience, when you were struggling. Um, you know, so that is what I essentially did. Um, it was also really important to me to meet new friends, but I was really scared, even though I am outgoing um, behind the chair and at work. Um, but when it comes to like meeting new people, it terrified me. Um, but like I said, being scared is also exciting. And people, when you're vulnerable and you tell them, I'm freaking out because I'm new here and I have no idea what I'm doing and I don't know where to go. People love that because you're relatable at that point. If you act like you are so confident and you know where everything is and you know what to do, you almost are more intimidating to them. But if you just be honest and say, like, I'm new here, where do I go? What do I do? People want to help you just like you want to help them. So be honest and relatable, but go make friends in real life. Keep your Facebook page, your business um, advertisement, you know, post about Thrive, but also post about your life. Um, mix it up, you know, between posts. But make friends in real life so that when they do become Facebook friends with you, they're curious. They want to know what it is that you do. And that's how my team started to grow. So we went from um, 40, we did do, we went to 40K in uh, April of 2020. And then in June, we made it to an 80K team. And now our team, uh, last month we did $120,000 in sales. I am just 
shocked. <laughs> I am excited. I am so proud of them, but our team is like a family. When we talk, when we post, when somebody posts about anything that they've done, everyone is there with this culture, this community where everybody wants to support each other. And that's what I was missing. I spent all this time at the beginning. My team's not working. My team's not doing this. My team's not doing that but I didn't take responsibility for not cultivating that in the first place. It was all my fault. Um, so when you are looking at, okay, I'm starting over, what do I do, where do I go? Please look in the mirror. It is nobody else's fault. When you change your mind, everything else changes. But if you can't own up to it, if you can't say any of this was your fault, you won't grow. You have to just be honest with yourself. So please ask yourself, like, what can I change? How can I be a better leader? What's missing in my team? What am I not doing that I could do better? Because when you have those hard conversations with yourself, that is when the magic happens. That's when you realize, okay, if this isn't working, this is what I need to change. And if you need advice, please, by all means, reach out to me. I'm happy to help you. Um, talk to your team or give you advice or look at your team group page and see what might be missing, which I've actually helped a couple leaders do. Um, but it's okay to admit to yourself that it's not okay. Like it's okay to admit to yourself, my team is not perfect. And when you're honest and vulnerable with yourself, that's where you change. So um, I think the only other question that I wanted to ask you guys is, you know, when this pandemic is over and everything is back to normal and there's no more masks and the kids are in school, if they are, maybe it'll, it'll be different. Um, when you can go places just like you used to, are you going to be a better person or are you going to be the same or are you going to be worse? Because we are moving forward to more growth and things are being different and they're getting better now. Are you better or are you worse? And don't let this opportunity to start over pass you without taking a hard look in the mirror of what you can do to make it better. So, Susan, I am done talking. You can <laughs> open the chat and all the things. There's one comment because I'm sure everybody was like, <laughs> she moved across the country. Do I have to move across the country to start over? <laughs> no. Um, she did pack up. I had one other person on my team who decided they wanted to move across the country too. I think y'all did this. And um, they got a big map and just threw darts at the map. And where it landed, they packed up everything and they moved there. So it's, it's I, I can see where that's refreshing. Y'all are braver than me. I don't, I don't know that I could ever do that. But um, there, I, I think metaphorically, a lot of you could just kind of think, have you ever just literally had to start over? I had a conversation with a millionaire leader this morning and um, she's a sideline of mine and literally had somebody on her team in 80K just decide not to do this business anymore. Do you think if she's a millionaire leader, 80K, a part of your team is huge. So she does have to do that. She does have to get back to the basics. She does have to start over, but it's super refreshing. And like, she called me this morning. She's like, what do you do every day? I said, I think I do the same thing you're doing, but let me just go ahead and verify for you. You know? Yeah. And it was, it was getting a plan. It was doing it. It was reaching out. It was being a different person. So Samantha, you are super, super social. You, I, I see that part of you. I see where you're really um, shy in some areas too. Like when you're in public and you have a mask on, how do you, how do you approach people? How are you talking to people? when you have this mask on, because when you smile, like you smile with your whole face, people are very mesmerized by your eyes, but your smile is very pretty too. So how, how do you approach people? What are some things that you're doing to build? Cause you're in a new area. Nobody knows you. Well, a lot of people know you now, but like, <laughs> they, I mean, there obviously you're building a team. Lots of people are getting to know you, but you went to a place where you didn't know anybody. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is I don't just approach people just because like, Hey, have you heard about the Thrive Experience? Because that would definitely not work. Don't do that. Um, but I'm just, I just try to make connections. Like I said, meeting people in real life and then when they become Facebook friends with me, that's when they realize what I do mm -hmm. or they figure out what the sticker is. I'm not spamming them with, you need this Thrive stuff. 
But I'll tell somebody, um, just earlier today, getting off the elevator, and this woman had a beautiful dress on, and she had these, like, braids, and her extensions matched her, like, I, I don't know, she was beautiful. So as soon as I got off the um, elevator, I'm like, oh my gosh, you are so beautiful. And it kind of took her back a little bit. Like, she wasn't expecting that. Um, women are so mean to each other, and people are so judgy. Like, they can just look at you, and you know, like... They're, they've got something on their mind that they're like thinking, you know, but I try really hard. Like if I like somebody's hair or outfit or shoes or whatever, and I'm out somewhere, just tell them because that's creating an actual connection. Um, I think what I love most about this is that it is real and it is genuine. Um, I'm just that kind of person anyway. I love making people feel better, which is why I love doing hair. So, um, you know, it's my passion to help people feel better, whether it's in the salon or if it's, you know, with the Thrive Experience or with just a compliment. I love the way you look. I love, you know, or even tell a mom in the store with kids who are crying or panicking or whatever that she's doing a good job. Like, I know it's hard as a mom, but you're doing a great job. Like, that makes people so happy and if you're doing this at places that you go to often that helps even more that's how I built relationships at church that's how I build relationships with my kids friends parents picking them you know up from school and taking them to and from places don't just stand there and say nothing like find somebody who you think something kind about them and just tell them and create relationships from there It'd be a better world if we all just complimented each other all the time. <laughs> I try to do that. You know, maybe if you do that for somebody, they'll do that for somebody else and they might not start thriving tomorrow, but at least their day is better. And then, you know, it just, it will come back to you. And they'll remember you. They'll remember yeah. you, especially if you complimented them on a, on a day that maybe they didn't feel like it. Hold on. I'm trying to check this chat real quick. Most of them are just very much complimenting you and thanking you for sharing your story. Um, but Samantha, on a, a team note, we are so proud of you. Like we, I, I have loved watching your, your transformation over the last year. And guys, she did that in the, she moved across the country with nobody that she knew. And then a freaking pandemic hits. Like, okay. <laughs> it's completely have to change. We've all had to change how we do business. Well, not really. I work from home already. So that was kind of cool, but you know, you had to change a lot of things, but we're so proud of you. I know Tammy and that whole group, they just love you. And didn't you just go to Ohio like this past week, you went back to Ohio and now you're in Vegas. Yeah. Um, my brother got married on Saturday and our wedding anniversary was the 22nd and then he got married on the 26th. So I was like, great, this is our anniversary. We're spending it in Ohio at your wedding. So we also had a mastermind training. Tammy hosted it. It was amazing. It was so what we needed to be together and just feel the thriver energy. That was like exactly what we needed. And then we flew home yesterday. Um, we dropped my kids off with their grandparents, which are the only people we knew when we moved here. That's why we picked Arizona was because my grandparents and that's it. They lived here by themselves. Um, so we dropped our kids off with them and we drove five hours to Vegas. So we got here yesterday. We're just here for a couple days, but we love that we live here. We are driving distance to everything. We can go um, up north for colder weather. We can drive to San Diego in five hours. We got to Vegas in four and a half. We can go to Mexico. We can go anywhere. And it's so much fun. We have literally been just exploring our state and just like, oh, it has been absolutely amazing. Um, and I'm also working together to host a leader retreat with another leader um, in October. So we, I'll be back in Ohio in a couple of weeks and we are going to host a weekend um, retreat with our team too. So I am so excited. And I just saw where Emily said, you're welcome to come to Bend, Oregon, girl, I'm coming. If it's pretty there, we will be there. <laughs> she, um, so she's doing this leader retreat. I know about this leader retreat with a, one of her sidelines. It's not even on her team and they have qualifications for it, but what's the name of the, the y'all are coming together. What did y'all name? Our leader retreat is called Cuss and Discuss weekend because we are just going to be real with each other we are going to be no sugar coating 
no fluff. Like we are getting down to business. And if somebody needs to say a bad word, I want them to feel like they are welcome to say a bad <laughs> word in our space. <laughs> That's so fun. I absolutely love it. Well, I'm proud of you. I know Lindsay is, Tammy is. You have some great leaders and a great We've, uh, I've enjoyed watching your team grow. Y'all are just awesome. So everybody, thanks for joining us today. We're going to wrap this up. Samantha, I really hope you go win some money today. Um, Me too. Yeah. <laughs> go, go gamble some in Vegas. But guys, we start these back over on Monday. We have a great lineup next week starting at 1130 Central Standard Time every day. So with that, you guys have a great day. Thanks, Samantha. Thank you. Bye. Bye.